Radio. Síť Intersystems. 67. Genotmiddelen. Intersystems. Netwerk 67. Tietokone. Intersystems. Verkko 67. Sussurri cinesi. Intersystems. Rete 67. The first Intersystems project, per se, um, although we hadn't really come up with the name yet, uh, was the um, Perception 67, the event, the mind excursion that was part of Perception 67, which was a kind of a celebration of lysergic acid. Ten environments that each of which would be one of the possibilities of your experience uh, if you took um, um, mescaline or LSD or uh, dimethyltryptamine or any of the hallucinogenics. People pr would pride themselves on going through the mind excursion on acid. I never did go through it stoned except, you know, pot, but uh, for a person who was high on acid, I think it would be pretty freaky. I designed the, the functionality of the different 10 rooms. Dick made sure that they didn't collapse in on top of people as they went through them. And Blake was a happy camper because his poetry was being read. And John did the music. Then we were done with it. And uh, I mean, Blake wanted to work with John and I wanted John to work with me. So that, that's why the intersystems came together. Essentially, it was um, Blake and me, just, uh, I don't, nothing was composed per se. You know, we had an idea for, um, uh, that was most often based on one of his poems. Good lady, when you're walking out, many people, many trains, close your eyes and feel about Hippie isn't quite the right word, although it was hippie era. Um, it was more like beat somehow, really, in my mind. Sick of this world and walked out into the mountains. And at that time was God the maker, at that time was man. Number one in systems is really more of a free form jam. I mean, his poems indeed sound like they're improvisations sometimes, quite often. I had a prepared piano and I had an organ, the, the ace tone, and we had two half-track uh, tape recorders. In the course of getting ready to do the second album, this is when we got the Moog synthesizer. I just said, we got to have one of these, <laughs> right? And uh, so we got in touch with Robert Mo Moog. We found out it's Trumansburg. That's where his factory was. We had a van, the Intersystem van. It was like quite remarkable looking um, because it was all different uh, phosphorescent paints on it in large swaths of color. We got stopped at the border big time and uh, taken totally apart. The van was all of the, the, you know, but we only had our personal possessions. And Blake went and snitched and uh, I heard the, one of the guards saying, they say they use, but they're not carrying. I think good, good going there, Blake. That, that'll speed up the, uh, our entry into this. Anyway, we went down, we picked up the synthesizer. 
He was excited about our, our arriving from Canada because it was the first uh, Moog synthesizer uh, brought into Canada. Yeah, I'm uh, near positive that he had no doubt in his mind that we were uh, uh, a group that was going to explore electronic music uh, psychedelically. <laughs> Peachy was the first uh, full album that had all uh, Moog synthesizer as the, uh, as the instrument accompanying Blake's poetry. And the way I recorded the Moog then wasn't so much like playing uh, prepared things. I would just like make a patch and playing stuff, right? Um, anything, noises. And then we'd cut the tape up into tiny pieces, <laughs> literally, like, you know, and... Um, put it back together again, sometimes backwards, sometimes forwards, change the speed of parts of it, and, and all, of, all of that stuff, standard uh, concrete music uh, procedures. Once upon a time, once upon a time, once upon a time, Harry found a cave in the country. Seeing what a nice cave it was, and thinking it was a better place to live than his house in the city, he decided to stay there. And uh, Blake wrote these kind of narrative poems of Fred and Harry finding guns. And uh, um, he would just like, you know, talk into the microphone and we'd maybe treat the mic sound sometimes or sometimes not. <laughs> the Art Gallery of Ontario, they, they held a concert by Intersystems. It was presented from what Dick Zander had designed. Um, we called it duplex. It was an aluminum structure, and the light component to our Intersystems presentation was from the second floor of this duplex where Dick and I were ensconced. And on the bottom floor was uh, me with the Moog synthesizer, and um, Blake uh, was, you know, just in a, on a stool with his microphone, and uh, he, uh, he had poetry that he, uh, that he delivered with me, you know, rambling along uh, with, the, with the Moog. That was it. That's all there was to it. But it was the first time that anybody had ever heard somebody playing a Moog synthesizer in public. And uh, so in that sense, it was kind of historical. The um, uh, Mind Excursion Center, as we called it, that was Michael's idea. He, he, he just thought, we could do this way better, you know, because it was the, the one in, uh, at U of T was no budget for it. I would come up with these harebrained ideas of a floating room, and then Dick and I would work out how to make a room that you entered all of a sudden floated. That was one of my favorite rooms, the confetti room and having to get a fluorescent confetti made. And it took a couple of months to build it in this amazing place on a Rue Valley in Montreal. And, uh, and we hired uh, you know, a crew of uh, union workers to, to work on it. Unbeknownst to our uh, inner systems innocence, most, if not all, of our uh, employees in Montreal um, had allegiance to the mafia. We couldn't pay them at one point, you know, as we were reaching the end of the project, and uh, they were not happy. And they came after us with guns. I mean, they were firing guns at us in Rue Valley. But. It opened, and uh, you know, I wouldn't say it was a smashing success. I mean, it stayed open for several weeks. It kept us going, and it was a riot to do. It was really fun to do, you know. And uh, our wives all wondered what the hell we were doing, <laughs> but, uh, but we did it, you know, and uh, and it was great. And then uh, the third, with a very simple title on the front in French and in English, it said free psychedelic poster inside. And of course the 
having to explain that that was the name of the album, not that there would be a pre-psychedelic poster inside. Each song on the album is uh, a, a room in the uh, Mind Excursion Center, and uh, there was a poem that went with each of those, and I think Blake's po poem for that is brilliant. It, um, the Gordian René, um, based on uh, being a TV soap opera, and you know their their love and their demise. And, and uh, it's just, I think it's just amazing. So we have the young couple baking flowers in the electrical garden, looking upon the large projection screens, which are the walls of the world, contemplating the big projector in the sky, giving blessings and looking in each other's eyes, feeling strange and dreamy like confusion come true. It was Blake that was the fly in the ointment, um, his not liking touring. I think Blake was kind of going crazy at that point. He had too many drugs, and uh, he was really getting kind of nuts. And um, Dick being ambivalent, um, Dick was always the sarcastic uh, contributor to the whole proceeding. He, he had no real love of the electronic music that uh, Intersystems was represented by. So with um, that having been said, um, I kept the studio and the monthly rent uh, necessity. Michael, you probably heard him complain, he got stuck with bills that <laughs> somebody had to pay and so forth. I got the synthesizer and uh, you know, it was just, that was it. Blake uh, moved to a place um, with his Selectric tape, typewriter and um, a couple of reams of paper and he was happy to, you know, escape the clutches of intersystems. When I moved out west, we struck up our relationship uh, again um, and uh, I, gosh, that would have been about 92 and we just really enjoyed seeing each other and talking about things. A very privileged time for all of us to have lived through. Just amazing. Sometimes a seizure twists my arms behind me. I scream and scream, and I am nothing but a bundle of broken bones. Not even a memory. out of their sockets, dangle on hot threads of pain. Sometimes, they nail my flesh on a broken doorway. And then I can hear some kind of heavy animals moving.